Hey lovely people, Jonathan Matt Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to my channel. For today's tutorial, I'll be focusing on a project that I've been meaning to share with you guys for such a long time, and that is painting leather upholstery. Now, if you have followed me for some time, you may think that I've already covered this off, but I haven't. That was a very different project. That was fabric upholstery to create a faux leather effect. I'll link that into the description box below if you want to learn how to paint fabric to look like leather. But for this project, we're gonna focus on how I can re-realize the color of this beautiful little armchair. It has lived with us for a long time. I bought it really cheap, 10 pounds on Marketplace, but it doesn't work in my um, roomscape anymore. The color's just wrong. So we're gonna re-realize it and I'm gonna take you through this step-by-step. -step. It's such a simple project. Um, leather is a fabulous substrate to use chalk paint on and the durability is awesome. So don't fear guys, just go for it. So let's take a closer look at the actual chair. Okay guys, at this stage, I want to take the time just to talk you through a couple of steps before we start any painting. Number one is the leather chair will need a really good clean. Now, you could use a dish soap or um, a grind cutter, anything to take away any greasy residue. This chair has been used for years and hands have touched it, so there will be a buildup of residue, so you need to remove all of that. It's a little bit like painting furniture just that prep work and cleaning the surface before paint. The other thing is, as you can see, over the years, the pattern of this leather has changed. Um, there is sections at the back where it's worn away. I really like this look. Now, I'm also choosing a color that's keeping this chair really traditional. I want to go from red ox blood to a tan leather. Obviously, color choice is completely yours. You could go from white to pink, wherever you wanna go with your color choices. I just like to keep it traditional. I want it to look like this chair has never had any paint on it. It will look exactly as a traditional chair would look. So take your time, take some pictures at this stage. If you're going for that traditional look, take some pictures so you can remember where the lighter shades of patina are on the surface of this chair. So I've decided which colors that I'm gonna go for on the overall piece. It may change along the way, you know what I'm like. But the base coat is gonna be, the canvas coat is gonna be on Fleur, Annie Sloan on Fleur. This is a gorgeous, rich chocolate brown. Now I have considered that I'm gonna be putting dark wax over the whole piece, so this will get a little bit darker. So I'm aiming for all of these areas, such as the buttons and in the crevices here and here, which will be much darker. So one thin coat and then leave it to dry and then we're gonna go on to a second coat. Two thin coats is much better than one really thick heavy coat. Also the brushes that I've decided to use is a medium Annie Slow natural bristle and a Posh Chalk um, Woodgy Brend brush. This is because it's got a lovely point on which will help me get into all of the crevices. Don't forget that you will need to lift any of the folds in the fabric and you're gonna to have to peel back 
so you can get right into each crevice to apply your paint. So the whole chair has had one really thin coat of on fleur chalk paint and I just thought I'd take a moment just to show you how this uh, looks and sounds and feels. So as you can hear, it does feel kind of a little bit crispy, but there is still flex in the upholstery. That is exactly how it should look at this stage. Don't panic. It will go a little bit crispy before it gets soft again with the clear and dark wax at the end. So all I'm gonna do is leave this to dry for another 20 minutes or so, and then I'm gonna go back and apply another thin coat over the top, probably a half pass really. Um, I'm gonna use um, my atomizer, adding water to my brush as I go along so it, it spreads more freely. So then we've got one full flat coat of on fleur. So that's my second coat of on fleur applied. It went on like an absolute dream. You may have noticed in the previous clip of the speeded up clip that I was using my brush with the atomizer to the brush rather than the surface of the chair. The reason for that is there's lots of folds and creases and if you apply water to that first coat you can 
agitate the paint a little too much and you will get a distressing technique and coming back to the original colour underneath. So small amount of water to the brush and this will add more fluency to get that lovely fine coat and a solid finish. Moving on to the next part of the process and what we're going to do here is add some nuances of colour. Now tan leather, when you look at tan leather there is so many different shades of orangey browns. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to mix up another batch of colour which is going to be en fleur and Barcelona orange. We're going to kind of go somewhere in the middle of the two and I'm going to use this brush. Now this brush is a wax brush, it's kind of flat headed, it's a little bit like a, um, a big stippling brush. So I'm going to use this in a dry brushy kind of a way but it will be a little bit more paint than dry brushing, we won't be offloading so much and I'm gonna hit the higher grounds. The idea is we're gonna leave the en fleur deep into all of the crevices and just brighten that shade up and then we'll do a second pass. So I'm just using my mix mat for this. I'm gonna put some en fleur on there and I've got some Barcelona orange, which I'm gonna put the other side. Uh, and I'm gonna play around with the two colors. I'm just gonna mix them together to get a lovely softer shade. Let's really mix that up. I'll leave a little bit of the on flare there. That's lovely. It's just trial and error to see what you want to see with your colour. I think that is lovely. It's a lighter shade. I'm going to add some water to this as well. I want some freedom with this paint. I'm not gonna mix everything really well. I'm gonna allow some of it to just sit with pure color here and there. And that is kind of where I wanna be with the color. Adding some highlights to the surface of the armchair. All I'm doing is adding my lighter tone to my brush, tapping away and offloading just a little bit you could pick up a dry cloth as you would do with dry brushing and offload a little bit of that paint. But I'm going for the centre parts, the highest parts of the armchair first and then using the residue of paint and softening away in circular motions. Now I'm going to tackle the seat pad. Now, obviously people would sit on this and over time it would wear thinner in the middle. So what I'm going to do is start with the middle with our softer colour, heavy and blend out. And as we come to the edge, kind of soften away, we will dry brush the edge of the piping a little bit lighter as well. So loading up the brush again, tapping off, I'm going to start in the middle, a little bit more Barcelona orange in there, I think. So that's what we've got. And I'm going to start right in the center, swirly motions. And I'm just picking up the other color, which is on fleur as well. And I'm going to swirl around. I think there needs to be a little bit more water in there. That's it, a bit more freedom. Circular motions will do it. And I'm leaving a little edge so I can come back and soften that in. Picking up different colours all of the time. I'm going from on fleur here and there to a bit more Barcelona orange. 
I think along this edge, more Barcelona orange. It's a little bit like blending on furniture. Now I can feel my brush dragging, so I'm picking up the water, spritzing the brush. And I've got a bit more freedom there. Moving that Barcelona orange around. the edges just to blend away we'll start at the back now if we come to the front I'm going to use more or less the dry brush a bit more work involved here I'm going to leave little nuances of the original arm flare in there, in the crevices. And now I'm gonna repeat the process along the sides. So here we have it guys. I'm really happy with the color. All I'm gonna do now is the final highlighting detail. So I've still got my mix mat out with all of the same shades, but I've popped down a little bit more Barcelona orange and I'm offloading on the brush and I'm just gonna take some of the higher details of the surface, like round the top of there, a couple of little higher details on the edge. I'm just gonna highlight across here and there I need to offload a little bit more of the paint. Don't forget, this is gonna have lashings of dark wax on it. So this orange is gonna change, its color will change. So that's all of the dry brushing complete. It's nice and dry once again. And now we're gonna move on to applying a top coat of Annie Sloan clear wax. The whole piece of furniture is gonna get covered in lashings of wax. You've got to think of this as like a hand cream. It's gonna penetrate through the dryness of the chalk paint right the way down to the leather substrate and it will make the leather nice and supple again. So let's get stuck in with the first coat of wax and then we'll move on to applying lots of beautiful dark wax to create a really wonderful natural patina.
there's just a few final steps to take to complete the project. I'm going for that really old fashioned tan look. So I'm gonna use Annie Sloan Dark Wax as liberal as I did with the clear wax, just to give it a healthy coat all over. And I'm gonna use the existing um, cloth, which is loaded up with clear wax, just to remove on the higher ground once again. Also, I'm gonna push the dark wax into the studded area, remove the top, and maybe go back with some gilding wax. There's also another little technique that I want to show you on how to create a wonderful patina with the dark wax. So let's start applying a healthy coat of wax. What you can see here is that I've got three wax brushes on the go. One small one to push into the details, one larger brush to do the larger areas to apply the wax. Then I'm offloading with my cloth to take any surplus away. Then I'm taking a fresh, clean wax brush and stippling away. You really will get a wonderful, authentic look when it comes to creating leather this way. So when it comes to painting leather upholstery, my biggest piece of advice would be use plenty of clear wax to soak into the chalk paint. Remember, like I said, it's like hand cream. It will penetrate the substrate and allow the durability and flexibility back into the leather upholstery. As you can see here, I'm also using lots of dark wax. This is purely for cosmetic reasons. And don't forget, once you have wiped your surplus dark wax away, use your dry wax brush for the stippling technique. It absolutely looks awesome. Another quick note is to leave your dark wax finish once you're happy with it leave it until the next day about 12 hours should be fine just to come back and buff off any excess wax it will bring the leather to a really nice shine also guys i want you to treat the leather upholstery as you would if you had painted a piece of furniture give it the full 30 days curing time before starting to use you can use your armchair, it will be absolutely fine. And don't worry about the dark wax, it doesn't come off on your clothes once it has fully cured.
So that's just about it for today's tutorial. All that's left to do is use some Annie Sloan warm gilding wax just to highlight the upholstery studs as if they've never been painted over before. I truly hope that you've enjoyed my leather painted upholstery. If you're new here and you haven't seen any of my tutorials before, there's plenty more to be had and I truly hope that you've enjoyed this one. If you have, hit me with a thumbs up or even better, a subscribe and I hope to catch you all on the next tutorial.